Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as you can see the van's in the background here. Um, the van is now currently finished. And um, this video is going to be much a follow on from part one. You can see in the background there I have a part of my van covered up. Um, just for the meantime. So it's just uh, masking tape I've done that there now. Um, I have nothing else. So I'm just going to do a walk around this van here. So the last time this van was in this car park it was rotten. It is currently not rotten no more. There has been a lot of work put into it. Um, as you will see in the video clips um, that follow and the images. However, part two of this video, um, it is more focused on detailed photos rather than video clips. Um, a lot of cars about today. So, um, part two is more detailed um, photos and discussions rather than video clips. Reason being, um, obviously I can't spray or blast or do a lot of all that sort of work near this camera, camera recorder. So um, part three will be more focused on video clips, such as making the steering wheel boss and powder coating spacer, wheel spacers, as you can see in the background here. So the van is currently all, all dirty. You can see the powder coated calipers. Um, powder coated calipers or hubs at the back. I'm going to take the camera out of the stand here. So I'll just give it a week. So there we go. Oh, it's freezing. Okay, so nicely, nice and neat. Looks blue in the camera, but it's actually pure, pure purple, candy purple. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the actual. Uh, I think it's one video clip, and then the rest will be photos. Next week we'll follow multiple um, video clips itself off doing all the fabrication to the steering wheel here okay so i decided to do a wee video clip on these subframes cross members as you can see the one at the front is immaculate the one at the back is rotten so this is an original one um you will see um, pictures at the end of this video um of one i ordered off ebay that was completely Rotten, exactly like this back one. Um, believe it or not, this is sandblasted and painted approximately one month ago, and that's how rotten it is. Um, terrible, look at this side. Disgusting. So, um, after a lot of um, searching, I found this really immaculate subframe, probably the cleanest one in Ireland or UK, um, that came the whole way from Spain. As you can see, so these two started their life together and this one has ended up um, not corroding at all but I'm going to sandblast it and paint it anyway um, to leave it nice and glass black So this one's all pitted and all holes So basically the radar sits on top of these rubber bungs So again, this is from Spain This is the original, it's a 2005 Scudo van I'll turn this one around again to get a wee look at it so when I ordered um, these cross members, or one of them off eBay, it came as bad as this one, if not worse. And the rust was falling out of the package when I got it. And I dumped some skull on it at uh, eBay, or the seller. Um, I goes, what are you sending me, a bag of rust? And uh, he never replied back. So that's it. Immaculate subframe. I never thought I would get one as clean as that. But there you go. Okay everyone, so detailed pictures now of each stage, uh, repair stage and refurbishing stage of each part. So starting with the cross member um, that attaches to the subframe in the front of the van. As you can see the standard original one was completely rotten. Uh, and the actual subframe itself, but we will come to that later. So what I done is I removed the subframe. This is actually one um, I made a purchase off eBay that came with a hole in it and it was I, I don't know what they say about it actually, it was, I was stunned, shocked of what I received. So I contacted the seller and told him about it but he just ignored me. So I started um, searching again for another one, um, 
So this cross member supports the radiator and it's also a jacking point and obviously it supports the next or the chassis together, it will make it more rigid. Um, for towing eyes on it too, so obviously I didn't want to put this back on the van since I repaired all the panels um, and the cells and stuff. So what I done is I sent it back and I searched for another one. Um, I puck one up in Spain, it will appear soon in the images here. Um, it was really really good. So this one is um, the original, I think. Um, the original and the one off eBay was very much the same, completely rotten. So this is the eBay one with the eBay packages lying behind. Um, this is me sending it back. So this is the one I uh, sourced from Spain. Um, so uh, immaculate, um, hard to believe how clean it was. There was actually no paint in areas on it. And it was bare metal and it still didn't rust. Um, that just shows you the climate of Spain. Um, this took about four or five days to arrive, not very long. Um, inside the cross member you can see there is um, immaculate too and, and through them holes. Um, there is absolutely nothing, no corrosion whatsoever. That's just uh, like dirt. Um, sort of like, there's the inside of the old one that was blasted and it's terrible. terrible. Um, so um, at this stage I wanted to um, protect it. Um, for a future in this country, so what i done is I blasted it. This is still the old one. This is just comparing the, the, sp the one from Spain to the one from uh, UK that was based in UK all its life. So what i done is I blasted it and I uh, treated it with uh, rust um, inhibitor stuff. So it's basically uh, done it all again. Um, I put a wee uh, small, wee fine coat over the whole cross member. I then um, so this is me about to blast it. It was the easiest, um, the easiest thing I ever blasted in my life, um, because it was absolutely clean. You can see there. That's just a wee skift of the blaster. Um, after this, I put a red oxide on it, um, a red oxide stone chip, and then a black uh, two-pack gloss tractor paint to protect it for the future. Um, that's really it. So this is blasting the other side. So this is the Dunny Troll rust inhibitor stuff. So basically to keep it from any rust breaking through. Barrier. So this is the red oxide on top of it. And then a grey stone chip applied. And finally a black gloss to finish it off. Um, the wee short video clip that follows is um, straight after um, the cross member was finished. You can see here now um, the quality or uh, the protection that's got now, the layer, the layers it's got to protect it in the future. This is it here now, the wee video. So hopefully I won't see that rust in the game. Um, I obviously didn't treat the inside of it. Um, the rust in the inside out too. As well as rusting on the outside, but mainly inside out. So this is a start of the subframe um, refurb. So basically, I just done this on the van. I blasted everywhere, west cones, uh, anti roll, subframe bolts, everything, all done. Ball joints all checked. Any that needed replaced were replaced. Track rod ends, stub, hub, drives, everything. There was new CV ends put on the drives and new CV joints. Um, I think I demonstrated that in part one of this um, of my channel. So this is the hub stub itself. It was also blasted. Um, all old brake discs removed. Um, they were also powder coated. So this is a, the subframe finished. Um, it was obviously painted with a primer first. Treated with Danny Troll. Uh, new shocks. The, the shocks and springs are both brand new there. As are the CVNs. Can't be seen now. You can see there in the background the powder coated disc, candy purple, that will come in part 3 of um, this whole process. Um, part 3 um, video will be very interesting. Uh, lots and lots of video clips of the process. Um, so just again, loads of photos here showing the detail I went to. After I finished the chassis of the van, so you can see the Facebook um, logo there too, also on the wing. 
So the axle refurb was also sandblasted and fully stone chipped the same way I done the cross member. Um, one nowhere missed. Um, no one everywhere. Everything was removed. Um, rubber seats that the spring sits on. Everything was dismantled and done properly. The only thing I never touched in the van was the exhaust and the petrol tank and stuff like that. But there was already copper pipes all run through the throughout the van. The dust plates there in the back were also um, painted or blasted painted too. Um, so this is the new um, strut caps um, mounts. Um, they come bare metal. So what I done is I put a zinc primer on them, uh, then a black gloss, and I didn't bother lacquering them because there's no need. You know they're up in the hole. So basically, this is what happened to the van at the beginning. Um, they rusted um, through and contaminated the van itself, the chassis, and they bonded to each other, and it was really, really bad. You can see this in part one of in my channel of this van process. So this is them finished and um, being powder coated, ready for the bearings to be applied again, to be attached even. Um, those strut bearings for to allow the steering to turn. If that makes sense. So again, just loads of photos um, demonstrating. Uh, there's the old ones and the detail I went to. So them air was completely rotten with holes in them. So I just ordered new ones. And I wasn't just going to put them in the van bare because they would just start rusting and end up like that. After numerous years. So obviously at this stage, um, probably could have done me video clips, but I didn't because I was flat out. There's hundreds of things to do. As you can see by these um, videos. So this is the both strut caps, um, strut mounts, front, finished. Same bearings were used. Um, there was nothing wrong with them, so they topped them up with grease and put them back together and put them on the strut mounts. Uh, these were perfect. Um, moving on, so now, um, as I've stated there already, I'm, I also uh, replaced uh, both CV uh, joints in the van because um, I think the driver's side was clicking, so I just replaced both. Uh, inner joints is grand, nothing wrong with them, it's usually the outer ones that fall apart or start clicking, the ball falls where. Or, um, so, where are we at now? So, moving on again, so. When I was blasting the van, I noticed that the clutch uh, master cylinder pipe started leaking on me and it leaked all over the place, made a mess. I couldn't get one of these pipes, I searched all over the web, so I had to make one. So this is basically a um, quarter inch pipe now to 3 sixteenths. So this is quarter inch here, with the fitting on it, flared. And I got a, a fitting pipe with the same connector in the end there, and I made a fitting because I could not source one anywhere, all over the internet. So this is quarter to 3 sixteenths, female to female, welded with a TIG. The pipe I'm using there name of the swirl or the wee effect off a of Fox or Sapphira, I think, as far as I mind. So this is another task that I never liked um, doing. It needed done because it was disgusting looking. So when you open the door in the van, you could see the hinges were contaminating the door itself. So what I done is I rem the bolts had to be removed with heat, so I welded nuts onto them and moved them back and forward till they released, till they fell out. A wee video clip here demonstrates it. So this door isn't that bad with rust, but the other one is, you'll see in a wee minute. So this is one of the nuts, bolts, whatever, removed, um, using heat. Making sure not to damage the paintwork and outside of the van because I wasn't for painting the sliding doors. Um, I could say I'm not going to go overboard with painting and all, but clearly I have went overboard. So this is two, the first one screwed out, uh, back and forward. So um, this is, a, I think it's the driver's door. So what I've done is I tapped the holes again for new bolts. You can see there. Um, that's the old ones. Again, I take lots of photos to actually show what I'm doing here. So you can see the state of the old bracket on the door there. Um, obviously, I had to get new ones. 
But even if I was to get new ones, I had to um, I'll go on to that in a minute, but blast them and treat them and all again. So this is the passenger door, really, really bad. So on behind this, we have the bracket uh, really um, eaten into the door itself. Um, what I done here is I cut this all out. Um, I didn't just paint over it, uh, as most would do. I cut it all out, removed any pitted areas, rust, and shaped a new piece in stainless and welded it in with the MIG welder. Um, very minimal fillers are used as you will, as demonstrated here in the photos. So this is the old brackets and this is me using a, a cardboard template to get the size and the fitting the stainless piece that I'm going to set in needed to be. Um, this is it, ready to rock, ready to be welded in. Uh, this is just, um, I think it's um, 1.5 mil stainless. Not sorry, I'm telling lies, that's not 0.9 mil stainless. Um, again, same thing as the driver's door, the holes are tapped. This is again just showing how bad the brackets are in. Um, we will come to that in a wee minute. So I had to cut this one because I couldn't release the bolts. So let's just weld it up with the MIG. Um, you can see there it's nothing special, but obviously it's more tack than seam welded. Tack, 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 tack. Loads of tack so it doesn't put too much heat into the door. This is it, sanded and painted, ready for a wee skim of fillers, topper, stoppers. Um, at this point, sanded, ready for painting. Both doors. So as you can see here, I went overboard with this. Uh, primer on, uh, just uh, spraying at this point with the base coat, ready for the lacquer. Uh, masking taped up to the edges, sort of flared in, um, not using the sharp edges of the masking tape. Sort of leaving a wee curve in the tape so it doesn't, you doesn't uh, blend it in nice and neat, does that make sense? So again, um, this is a stage that well, required a lot of work. So I sourced um, new hinges, brackets, roller brackets, whatever you want to call them. Um, off the internet again. I actually have four of these now, four clean ones, two on the van obviously that's been refurbished. So I blasted at this point with glass again. Um, nothing's uh, used, uh, no sand used, it's all glass. So at this point these uh, are treated after being blasted with Dunitrol, coated with a red oxide, ready for the black um, gloss coat at this point. So that's just away back in October, it is now currently January. A lot of work went into this van. Again, I keep stating. Um, so this is the brackets up in the ruler door in the middle of the door. Um, this is them finished, um, been sprayed in the tent and hung to dry. So a nice black gloss. Uh, it's paper matic uh, tractor paint I'm using. If anybody wants to know, it's really good paint. It's like an enamel finish. Much like the finish of powder coating if you apply it properly. Uh, nice smooth finish with no haze. So again this is another task that required lots of work and lots of effort. Actually a lot a lot. This is much more... Lot of more uh, effort than the hinges, you know. Um, so this is these uh, rails, runners are powder coated from factory. There's a zinc coat below them. You don't want to break that zinc coat. Uh, you don't want to remove the zinc coat. Um, so what I had to do is remove the powder without harming the zinc. Um, obviously I didn't use the old runners that came up there on the start of the images because they were too badly gone. The runners add in through the metal itself. I had to make a bracket to um, attach these or mount them into the, the oven or hang them in the oven as can be seen there. So if this oven is um, made by me, it's on my YouTube channel so if you want to see it go and look at it. It's an industrial oven. So. Um, this is one of the reels from the bottom of the door. Um, you can see the wee lip on it there. So this is the bottom reel. I think it's this is the passenger um, reel. So this is ready, blasted, ready for zinc. Then a black powder applied at this stage. Then it's put in the oven again. Then you get this nice finish. Um, so these um, reels coming from factory would not be in this state. Um, really, really neat. Uh, a lot of powder, so there's a zinc powder on it as I stated. 
black glass and no lacquer, no, not required. So the four of these um, are done, same. Uh, this is the upper middle one, so you can see there's no lip on it, we so You can see me comparing it there to the old ones. So this is them finished along with the strut caps. Um, a wee video clip here follows um, the four um, finished together. So again, this is blasting um, one of the runner reels. Um, there's four of them here, so quite a lot to do. A um, lot of work. Okay, so the wee video clip here shows the four runners finished. Um, looking amazing. Um, spanking new. Better than factory. Um, inside and out and rear. Um, immaculate. Ready for the van. Okay, so this is the reels runners mounted to the van. Um, this hole at the back required a nut to be inside the cell. Um, I didn't uh, put one on there, so at the start when I installed the cell, so I used a rivet nut instead with a wee bit of steelers on it to keep the water out. So this is for the, this is for the bump stop of the doors, um, a bolt, M6 bolt. This is the up or the refurbed, um, what do you say, updated there, refurbed hinges attached to the runners. Ready for the doors to be attached. This is the lower hinge in its position. With a bit of paper just to protect the paint. This is attaching the rivet nut to the driver's side for the bump stop. So believe it or not, the splash scars in this van were all done up too. And custom ones were made for the back. This is a template that was used. So um, this is a template that is now um, bolted to the van in this image. Um, two new ones are made. Uh, using this template. So moving on to the front here, you can see the rivet nuts that were uh, attached to the wing. Um, these plastic bits are used as covers to keep the dirt from going in. Um, the rivet nuts get in the way of the splash guard, the splash guard gets in the way of the rivet nuts. So moving on to the back here, this is the back now um, with the template used to make it and the driver, or sorry the passenger side too, passenger's rear. Um, believe it or not, this splash guard here was extremely hard to get for the subframe um, and this one for the front arch. So I had to make one um, for the passenger side, well repair one, using an old mud flap. Um, the final pictures here, the images show this, um, using an epoxy resin and rivets, you can't see this. I also um, Put a wee bit of epoxy over the rivets to remove that silver colour so it can't be seen in, in through the arch. So this is the splash guard finished. And believe it or not, I tried a hundred people on eBay to get all of these and it was extremely impossible. Um, so I was at the end up, I was just glad to get this done. So I obviously didn't want the dirt going on around the new cross member and all that stuff in the van. So finishing up here now, um, the last thing, this is a picture of the splash guard on the inside. Um, finishing up here with one final image of the tow bar refurbed. Um, simple sandblasted uh, primer and gloss black. Um, please come back next week to see part 3. Part 3 will be more interesting and don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you, bye bye.